Hello everyone and welcome to Art and Design. My name is Tarke and in this video we're going to be taking a look at a free Photoshop replacement that you don't even need to download, you can just use it online. Alright, so the website in question is this one called PhotoP. Now, it's basically an application that runs in the browser. And with Safari open, I can just go to photop.com and now I have access to a rudimentary version of Photoshop. Well, it's not specifically Photoshop, it's PhotoP, but it is definitely meant to be like Photoshop. You can control the canvas size and all that sort of stuff here, but I'm just gonna click create. So now we are in the interface of PhotoP. And this is what it looked like. It pretty much like Photoshop, you can zoom in and out. You can move around on the canvas like so. And as you can see, the interface is pretty much in most ways identical to that of Photoshop. Obviously, there are going to be some features in Photoshop that you're not going to be getting with PhotoP. But I mean, that's given. Photoshop costs a lot of money. Well, this is a free online alternative to Photoshop. And what I'm going to be doing in this video is I'm going to be comparing what it's actually like to use on the iPad versus what it's like to use on the PC or Mac. So with the iPad open, let's take a look at what it's actually like to use on the iPad. So let's open up a document. I'm going to open this one right here, which is a, some sort of squirrel. Uh, it's a template that uh, you can launch when you open up PhotoP. And let's just start by clicking on a layer and see if we can just select a layer by clicking on it or tapping on it with the pencil. So again, we can move it around and yeah, there we go. Let me try to select this one below. All right. So that seems to work. So I can select a layer uh, below another layer by tapping on it. Now there are definitely some features which are kind of wonky. Um, for example, I can't tap on these um, these toggle buttons over here in the top. I can't toggle them with the pencil. It just doesn't work. I have to use the fingers for some weird reason. So uh, it sort of seems to suggest that it might not necessarily be optimized for the iPad yet, at least. Another evidence of that is undoing. You can't undo by tapping with two fingers and you can't undo by swiping to the left with three fingers, which is the native way to undo on the iPad OS. So let's try something that the iPad is really good at, and that is drawing with it. So let's pick up brush and uh, yeah, let's just zoom in a little bit and let's see what happens if I draw something. Um, how big is the brush? No way to know. So let's just draw something. Oh. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah, that's that's not that's not that's not good. Uh, I don't know. Let's try another brush. There are a lot of particles in this brush, so that might actually slow it down a bit. So let me try just a very simple um, hard edge brush. That's much better. Wait, is there such a big difference between these two presses. So there's definitely pressure sensitivity. We can see that, but it it's a little bit weird. I can't put my finger on it. It feels a little bit wonky. Let me try one thing. Oh, did you see that? I did not do that. Oh, and also leaving marks as I, as I zoom in and out, but yeah. Okay. There's something definitely wrong with this. It's adding these weird spikes. So my conclusion for the iPad using this for drawing, ah, there are better alternatives out there, but I'll definitely keep my eye on it on the iPad to see if it improves over time. But now let's take a look at what is it actually like to use on a PC or a Mac. Let's start by creating a new project. I'm just going to create the thumbnail for this video. So. And that's a 1920 by 1080p canvas. I created that. And now I'm just going to find the PhotoP logo. 
just gonna search for that and there we go photo p and copy image i'm just gonna press paste and it asks me do you want to allow this yeah all right so holding shift down i can scale it and yeah i mean i just took a picture from another website copied it and then pasted it directly into uh, photo p i'm gonna do the same for photoshop and now i've already allowed it so it didn't even bring up that pop-up and i can just start copy pasting like so interesting so this seems to be a much more thought out experience seems pretty smooth actually to use um so i'm gonna add some text so I'll press t and as i do i'll start writing yep that is exactly as expected increase the size of it <laughs> i mean it just feels like photoshop it just feels like the good old photoshop that i've known and used for you know better part of 15 years or so and if you want to see photoshop content on this channel like tutorials and stuff let me know in the comments down below changing the font a lot of fonts here and it's not specifically fonts that i'm familiar with let's see um i'm not gonna bore you with me just choosing a font for <laughs> two hours so uh, let's just pick some font for now and go on with the composition so select these two here i'm gonna scale them down just a little bit like so all right uh, move this and let's see okay so here are the layer styles that we have access to i'm just gonna add a drop shadow and that feels absolutely 100 percent familiar this is just like photoshop i can even add another drop shadow uh, to make it a little bit more realistic and yeah i mean check that out this is running on the browser i didn't need to download it anything I didn't need to install anything now i'm just gonna add a little bit of a gradient so a subtle gray color fade something like this mm -hmm. that looks really clean but i think i need a little bit more color just to so I'll make it pop a little bit. So I'm going to group these layers, the logos that is, and let's see. First, I'm going to add a drop shadow on the group. Just going to see if that's possible. And yep, that that just simply works. So <laughs> That's great. I, we can add layer styles on a group of layers. That's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Now I, I need a little bit more color. So I'm going to duplicate this layer group, the logos that we created. and do that by pressing Command J and I've duplicated the group. Now I'm just going to reposition them and make them be the background. So the colors from the logos are going to become the background. So I'm going to actually merge them together like so, both of the logos, and then I'm going to blur it. I'm going to add a lot of blur just to get a sort of nice gradient using the colors from the logos. And then I'm gonna change the color of the font. Just gonna add a little bit of a highlight just to sort of make it stand out a little bit more. There we go. After that, I'm just gonna play around with the background. It doesn't feel exactly right like it is right now. So I'm just gonna so let's see if I can find a better position for it and change the title. And now I'm going to find the right font. So I can disable all the fonts that I don't want to use, the font families. And there we go. I found a nice font. That looks pretty good. Final touches. Just going to add a bit of arrows here and there. Just going to draw them in. We are pretty much good to go yeah that was way 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 better than i anticipated so here's the final result uh, you'll see it on the trending page on youtube like so anyways 
but well, thank you all very much for watching like this video and subscribe and all that sort of stuff take care have an awesome day bye bye